What's up, y'all? This is Jay Blanco, and this is Blanco the Movie, where we react to everything over here. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and comment your Instagram down below. And the first five people that comment gets a shout out in my next video. You dig? What's good, YouTube? It's Jay Blanco, and I'm back with another video. And today we reacted to five most scary police interrogations of 2018. You know what I'm saying? This is probably two years ago. You know what I mean? It's a minute ago, but I'm definitely is. Uh, I seen the thumbnail on this, and I just had to react to it. So we gonna get right into this. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, you guys? My name's Ty Knotts, and welcome to Top Five Unknowns: Five Most Shocking Police Interrogations of 2018. This is about to be crazy. <laughs> Hopefully, this better be. Number five. In the fall of 2018, a man by the name of Chris Watts was arrested and taken in for questioning after police determined that he'd taken the life of his pregnant girlfriend as well as their two young girls, aged three and four. Chris pleaded guilty to the charges and admitted his involvement in the crimes after he failed a polygraph test relating to the case. He informed officers that he disposed of his children's bodies in oil tanks and buried his wife in a shallow grave nearby. Chris was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Well, Tisha, Steve, perhaps crazy. the most revealing thing about these tapes is the sense that those detectives in Colorado never really bought Chris Watt's story. We got our hands on eight hours of police video tonight. Some of it's body cam from the couple's home. Most of it's inside that interrogation room where Yo, detectives slowly is, nail down really some, some semblance of truth about the world. murders. Chris Officer Wines with the Frederick Police Department is office press. Chris Watts answered his front door in his UNC t-shirt. Frederick, Colorado police officers arriving to question the Fayetteville native about the disappearance of his pregnant wife Shannon and their two young daughters, four-year-old Bella, three-year-old Celeste. The police body cam shows canine units trying to secure a scent amid the desperate search to find Shannon and the girls after Chris told cops and news reporters his wife had vanished. 24 hours later, Chris Watts is in the interrogation room telling the lead detective his marriage was in trouble. He was having an affair and says he told his wife the morning she disappeared, he was leaving her. Obviously, it gets pretty emotional, like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this the disconnection was there, like falling out of love. The day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay. So you can understand how that when I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? It honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. There's no, I would harm anybody in my family. At all. Are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you. But one day later, Chris Watts' story changed. Detectives tell him he failed the lie detector test. It was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, he did not pass the polygraph test. Cops bring in Chris's father, who tearfully tells his dad that Shannon strangled the girls. When detectives returned, Chris Watts' version of the truth was Shannon killed the girls, and when he found out, he killed her in a rage. The evil that I saw when I walked behind Shannon and she was on top of CC. I don't know what to do. That is crazy. I don't know what to do. Hey, this is Drew. Hey, Drew. Uh, I'm getting roasted by my buddies, and I gotta up my trash talk. Yo, that, that made me sick to my stomach just to hear that story. Like, that is crazy as hell. She was Number four. Two parents from Ohio were arrested in January of 2018 for their involvement in taking the life of their own five-year-old daughter. The father and husband openly admitted his involvement when interrogated by police, stating that the attack was premeditated. He explained how the original plan was to tie the girl up and place her in a freezer, and admitted that he and his wife had discussed taking the girl's life for quite some time. The mother of the young girl has since been given a 22-year prison sentence, and with the father's sentence being just 12 years. My wife, she's not a bad person. She's a good, good person. She's a good mother. She's a good Liang Xiao speaks to detectives at the Stark County Jail after investigators find his five-year-old daughter Ashley dead inside a freezer in his family's restaurant in Jackson Township. That's crazy. Yo. 
He explains how his wife, Ming Ming Chen, killed their daughter inside their apartment last January after she messed up her diapers. Chow tells investigators that after he realized his daughter was dead, he and his wife took the body to their family owned restaurant, mainly so their other daughter could see her sister and verify she was there after they reported her missing to police. How do you get Ashley from the apartment to the restaurant? Put her in a car seat. Carry her out to the car. Chow says he and his wife put Ashley's body in the restaurant freezer while they contemplated what to do next. Put her in that plastic container so that she wouldn't stink. In a rather matter-of-fact tone, the girl's father tells investigators what options they considered. It was three days. You might burn, burn it, bury it. Chow says they continue to operate the restaurant, still trying to figure out what to do. That's your kid. Number three. Police from Austin, Texas arrested a man under the suspicion that he committed murder. He was eventually charged for the crime, but while in the police interrogation room, the man tried escaping by climbing through the ceiling. He didn't make it very far and is expected to receive 99 years in prison with the bond set at $225,000. How, bro? How? How? What are you thinking about right now? <laughs> Yo, how do you even get up there? How do you even get your hands out of there? Yo. Yo. Trying to make no noise. See if you can bust through the wall. Crazy. Number two. I would have got out of there. I would Police gone. from Fairfax County arrested an 18-year-old who they believe may have been responsible for luring a 15-year-old to a nearby park, where she was held against her will, tortured, and then killed. The girl later admitted in an interrogation to stabbing the young girl 13 times. She's now facing up to life in prison with no possibility of parole. I kill her. How did you kill her? Oh. With a knife. What did you do with the knife? No recuerdo cuántas puñaladas le di en su estómago. I don't remember how many times I stabbed her in the stomach. Was it a lot? Like 13? Sounds like that. Why 13? 
I don't remember. No, I think it was 12 here. And then that, thir that 13 was in here. Number one. A Nebraskan man was being detained and questioned by authorities when he was captured on surveillance video, attempting to hide cocaine in the ceiling of an interrogation room. The man had apparently filed a police report claiming that his brother had robbed him. However, rather quickly, police realized that this was likely untrue. They kept the man in their presence while looking into the what issue and attempted doing? to get to the bottom of the situation. What That's when they captured doing? the almost unbelievable footage you're about to see. Take a look. Yelling. Hey! I think you're gonna take me to jail! Please, don't arrest me, please. Knocking on walls. Just part of the story that unfolds inside an interrogation room on the third floor of Omaha Police Headquarters. You're, you're Thomas Hartman? It begins when 25-year-old Thomas Hartman tells detectives yesterday. he was the victim of a crime. He said his brother robbed him, but detectives did their homework. You just need to come clean, because I have a video of, of him during the time of this robbery. He's on the other side of town. While charging Hartman with false reporting, his 17-year-old girlfriend was in another room talking with detectives about sex trafficking. Bang! Bang! She told detectives she was doing sexual favors in exchange for money under Hartman's direction. Don't get that money and bomb me out, Jay Lynn. 90 minutes later, Hartman what stacks the chair on the doing? table and puts his hands in the ceilings. Officers catch him in the act. They wonder if he's trying to escape. You're at the freaking police station, man, and you just put a chair on the table and tried to get up in the ceiling. Hartman wasn't escaping. He was hiding something. The officer didn't see it when he searched the ceiling, and it's easy to miss. Take a look again. Notice the white ball falling out when the officer lifts the ceiling tile. He found someone else's wallet up there, but didn't see the cocaine in the ceiling fall to the floor. It wasn't until the technician straightened up the room. Mother. When she discovered the drugs on the floor, adding yet another charge to the man who <laughs> first said he was a victim Yo, of a crime. Ugly ass nigga. Thank you. That boy was wild as hell. Like, I don't understand. Don't get interrogated. Don't get, don't ever get in those type of situations, man. If you like videos like this, make sure you give me a like, thumbs up, and all that. Show love. Help me in the algorithm and all that, man. You already know it's J Block on the mouth.